Ladies and gentlemen, as chairman today of the St. Gallen Symposium of 2010, it's my very great pleasure to uh, extend a very warm welcome to you all and say what a great pleasure it is to be here. I, feel, I love coming to Switzerland, I love coming to St. Gallen, and I feel that the good Lord Almighty makes me feel at home with the weather. <laughs> so, when, you know, when I come, I normally expect sun, which we have very little of. Uh, can I also say it's a great pleasure in welcoming people to recognize the presence this morning of members of the government of the Canton of St. Gallen, especially Karen Keller Souter and Mr. Kolliker, uh, the Bishop Emeritus of St. Gallen, uh, Eva Fura, uh, the rabbi of the Israeli congregation, Hermann Schmelzer. For me, these three days in May never really lose their attraction. First of all, there's Switzerland, there's the World Heritage Site of St. Gallen itself, there's the international dimension. Uh, the organizers told me there are people here from 46 countries. I bet that calculation is wrong in one sense. Did they include my country, Wales, as separate from England? <laughs> and I suspect not. The multidisciplinary nature of the event and the fact, of course, that it's organized by students and then there's the strap line, the leaders of today talking to the leaders of tomorrow, which takes us back to the origins of this conference 40 years ago. I remember the late 1960s very well. I was a young lecturer at the London School of Economics, closer in age, much closer in age to students than to most of the faculty. There was serious student unrest throughout most of the universities of Europe. And at the LSE, things got so bad. And remember, the LSE was a great bastion of Western liberalism and free speech that the school had to be closed for six weeks to students. In other cities, especially in Paris, there were serious riots. And as I turned on the television news last night, you couldn't help feeling some sense of deja vu. A huge generation gap had opened up between students and uh, leaders, between young people and older people, between universities and between business. And the very fabric of society was certainly under some sort of threat. And it was a response to that situation that the very far-minded people in St. Gallen set up this conference basically as a dialogue, an exchange of views between different generations, between people who aspire to leadership and people who are in positions of leadership. And since that time, we've had remarkable prosperity. We've had inflation. We've had recession. We've seen the fall of the Iron Curtain. We've seen China uh, enter the world economy. We've seen India reforming in a major way. We've seen a major move from west to east. And yet, there's been a growing recognition from countries with hugely diverse backgrounds, such as China, Saudi Arabia, Switzerland, the USA, Brazil, Russia, Great Britain, Germany, that despite the problems and despite the changes, the market economy, or capitalism, if you will, is the most effective way to create wealth and the social market economy is the most humane form of economic organization that we know. And at the heart of capitalism is the entrepreneur. Students this year have chosen Entrepreneurs, Agents of Change as the title. Sometimes we think of entrepreneurs just as people who start new businesses. But I believe entrepreneurs are people in any kind of firm who provide new products, different kind of services, who develop new methods of production, different channels of, produce, of, of uh, distribution, and always focusing on lower costs to the consumer. 
the most critical element, I think, of entrepreneurship is innovation. So entrepreneurs, by definition, have little regard for tradition. They are agents of change. The question we're going to ask today is who are entrepreneurs? What are they like? Why are they successful? This conference, if it's to be a success, demands your contribution. And I'd like to encourage you this morning to throw yourself wholeheartedly into the conference in putting questions, in expressing your views, in private conversations, challenge the accepted wisdom, reach out to people you otherwise would never meet, go outside your own comfort zone. I hope you will leave the conference and say, it was terrific being there. And if it's terrific being here, then can I ask you to throw everything into it?